embark on this week's exciting adventure with us. Right in the heart of Auckland, New Zealand. Prepare for all of the pet love as we encounter the quirky antics of cats and the endearing charm of dogs. Our adventure won't stop there. We'll set sail for Waiheke, the famed island of Vino and Sunshine, where we'll dive into an exhilarating catch and cook fishing expedition. So fasten your seatbelts for an amazing escapade. I'm Alison, a vet who loves cats and dogs. And this is Graham, avid fisherman and hunter-gatherer. We are pet sitters, explorers, and digital nomads. And together we make up Vet Around the World. Travelling to new places, having fun, meeting amazing animals, pets and people, Come along with us and join the adventure. Well, it's a beautiful sunny winter's day. Come and join us for brunch at one of our favourite cafes, La Vista. They make a great coffee and some delicious Mediterranean food. These weekday getaways, when the cafes are less crowded, are one of the little treats we enjoy because of our house-sitting lifestyle. Right now we're looking after three beautiful animals in the nearby suburb of Glendowie and would love to introduce you to all of them. Asher, Bailey and Sapphire meet the Fluffies. Oh God, sorry. This is Bailey, a Scottish or rough coat collie. Originally bred for herding sheep across the highlands of Scotland, the rough coat collie has a coat of long lush fur that dances with the wind. Ailey absolutely adores Graham. Here he is being brushed, keeps stripping out that thick undercoat, and keeps his coat looking absolutely beautiful. Bailey loves his daily walks along the pathways and fall shores around Glendowie. And he's a faithful and loyal companion, lying at my feet while I work online. Sapphire, the Norwegian forest cat, is the brains of the family. Clever, quick as a whip, doesn't miss a beat. The Norwegian feet of domestic cat from Northern Europe. It's carved out its existence in the bitter cold, with its coat a cascade of thick glossy fur, while beneath it lies a layer of woolly warmth, a shield against the relentless cold. They're a large breed of cat, you can just imagine what it's like when she's lying on top of her bed. She took a little while to get to know us, sniffing everything, even when we extended a knuckle for her to rub against. This is, of course, the polite way to introduce yourself to a cat. Here she is again, sniffing and rubbing. Okay, yes you are, friends. She loves this. And here is Asher, the Burman, or the sacred cat of Burma. The Burman breed nearly became extinct after World War II. Luckily, they were rescued, and we have a beautiful blue-eyed, silky-coated breed. He loves a great game of hunt and catch. You can see him proudly carrying off his prey. Playing games with your cats, it's important they have a sense of achievement by actually succeeding in catching the object of the chase. He loves being groomed and will come running to you anytime he sees the brush come out. Look at all the fur that we get. Wow! But grooming time is bonding time, and we love it. We love spending time with Bailey, Asher and Sapphire, but we also take the opportunity to get out and about and explore Auckland. One pristine winter's day, we embarked on a fishing adventure that would take us through the heart of Auckland City and onward to Waiheke, the famed island of wine. Our destination? A local fishing spot renowned for its bounty and aptly named Fisherman's Rock. 
But as with any adventure, the journey was fraught with unexpected twists and turns, transforming our simple fishing trip into something akin to an episode of The Amazing Race. Our voyage began with a mission to catch a bus, harder than you think, and then take a ferry ride from the Queen's Wharf, cutting through the harbour waters, past the brooding volcanic silhouette of Rangitoto, to our destination of Matia Tia Terminal. Right, so what are we doing today? We're uh, going to try and catch a fish. We're up early, heading on a bus. Here, I phoned a friend this morning and um, found out that uh, he's had a stroke. His wife's got cancer. And uh, there was someone lying on the side of the road who had, I'd had a stroke or a heart attack. We stopped to try and help the ambulance was on the way. But just this makes you realise you've got to make the most of every day. We don't know what we have tomorrow. Life's too short to be serious? Yep. <laughs> oh, what? So how come we're on this bus? Well, the first bus that we had to get on left us behind, just went straight past us. Didn't even see us. So what did you have to do? Jump in the car and drive straight out and get to the next bus stop. No parking tickets or speeding tickets were acquired in the making of this episode. City of Sales. We quickly make our way through downtown towards Queen's Wharf. A great budget travel hack is to get the half price off peak ferry tickets. Makes for a great day out on the water. Join the commuters, locals and the tourists and board the ferry. We both love being out on the water. Sailing, ferries, you name it. Do we deserve a high five for making the ferry? Grab a hot and tasty lunch to enjoy on the way. New Zealand pie. We're doing 30 knots, 74 degrees. Put a track on so we know where we're going. The dormant volcano of Rangitoto swings by, but we are heading somewhere else. Waiheke, the most charming of New Zealand's wine regions. Home to more than 30 boutique wineries scattered over the island, and don't forget the tasting rooms, posh restaurants and breathtaking views. Despite being a relatively small island with an area of only 92 kilometres square, Waiheke is home to a rich, lush, vital and diverse landscape, shaped largely by its unique island microclimate. Perfect for viticulture. Man of War Winery is our favourite, but that is a tale for another day. We jumped on another bus, and the journey was made all the more enjoyable by the friendly Waiheke bus drivers and passengers who generously shared their fishing tips and well wishes. We're here. We're going out to there. We found ourselves on a winding trail that snaked its way up and down stairs and rocky outcrops alongside the bay. We are truly blessed to live in this amazing country. There's got to be a big fish out there with my name on it. New Zealand's like this everywhere, whether you go to Dunedin, Fiordland, Mount Monganui, Great Barrier. What a stunning place to, to explore. We're just getting started. We've lived here all our life. Never been to these places. Just got to get out there.
put a spot. When we first got there, out there there's this massive big splashing. You think there's a big shark chasing something. We had a great time sitting in the sun, fishing. Unfortunately, due to some newbie camera issues, we didn't quite get the footage of Graham catching the kawai. You'll just have to believe us. Successful day fishing then. Pretty nice, good sized kawai. Graham quickly filleted the fish, enough to make it easier to take home with us. Destined for sashimi and pan fried fillets, these kawai were an extra bonus for our day's adventure. We got three kawai. I got the biggest one. Well, what a beautiful spot. The sun's just starting to set. Fading light does mean it is now time for us to make our way back home again, the way we came. Of course, we take the time to appreciate the golden tones of the setting sun. Our return trail home led us to a renowned fish and chip shop, right next to the bus stop where we had to catch our ride back to the ferry terminal. So what are we doing here? Thought we caught fish. Oh, we caught three, but we'll, that's what we look next week. Well, this is the best fish and chip shop on the island that was recorded, so we'll give it a go. Fish and chips while waiting for the bus. The goods. Sitting at the bus stop, waiting for the bus to the ferry. Check out the fish and chips. Could you save some for me? Here's your bit. Fresh New Zealand snapper. We made sure that this bus did not leave us behind. The ride across the harbour home was also part of the adventure. The dark water reflecting the city lights and a cup of coffee in hand to keep us warm. Bye Waiheke. And hello ports of Auckland. There's the harbour bridge all lit up. And the city skyline is nothing short of spectacular. Auckland, bustling metropolis of more than 1.7 million people and New Zealand's largest city. And yet, amidst the concrete jungle, urban sprawl and the ceaseless traffic, we've discovered hidden gems, pristine beaches, green parks, winding walkways and charming eateries. The art of slow travel has allowed us to linger here longer than a mere holiday would permit, enabling us to peel back the layers of the city and truly understand its essence, just like a local. So here's to Auckland, a city that we have grown to love. Thank you, Auckland. Graham prepares paper-thin shavings of raw sashimi with wasabi and soy sauce. We also pack some fillets away in the freezer for another day. And Graham cooks a delicious Thai red curry, his signature dish. Sauteed tomatoes, curry paste, a squeeze of lemon. Go to Southeast Asia for dinner. It's looking good. 
Are you a coriander fan or do you hate it? Try a little bit of red curry, garlic. I think I might go fishing tomorrow.